training on the type and suitability of personal protection equipment. The aim of today's training is to make candidates aware that the wearing of PPE in the workplace is a legal requirement, to ensure candidates of their responsibility to wear supplied PPE in the workplace. By the end of this lesson, you will have a basic awareness of the main requirements of PPE regulations and identify the types of PPE used most often in the construction industry. So what is PPE? PPE is equipment that will protect the user against health and safety risks at work. It can include items such as safety helmets, hard hats, gloves, eye protection, high visibility clothing, safety footwear and safety harnesses. Can employers charge for PPE? An employer cannot charge employees for their PPE whether it is returnable or not. This includes agency workers if they are legally regarded as employees. Employers should provide appropriate personal protective equipment and training in its use to their employees wherever there is a risk to health and safety. PPE should only be worn as a last resort. Whenever there are risks to health and safety that cannot be adequately controlled by other ways, the personal protective equipment at work regulations require PPE to be worn. So how do we assess and choose PPE? Employers should make a suitable and sufficient assessment of the risks to health and safety from exposure to the hazards within the workplace. For example, if there is a risk of objects falling from above, then a safety helmet or a hard hat should be worn. If there is a risk of crushing, then safety boots should be worn to guard against broken toes. The need for PPE must be identified through risk assessment. As with all risk assessments, those carrying them out must be competent to do so and have the necessary knowledge and experience of the methods of work. In addition to identifying the need for PPE, it is essential that the right type of PPE is specified and provided. All new PPE must be CE marked. The CE mark signifies that the PPE satisfies certain basic minimum safety requirements. Legislation in conjunction with the wearing of PPE. The Health and Safety at Work Order, NI 1978. The Management of Health and Safety Work Regulations, NI 2000, and the Personal Protection Equipment Regulations, NI 1993. The term Personal Protective Equipment. Not all PPE used at work is covered under the PPE regulations. Some items such as hearing protection and most respiratory protective equipment are covered under other regulations. However, the general principles of selecting suitability, maintenance and training are common to all regulations which refer to PPE. This slide shows examples of PPE mandatory signs. Firstly, we have eye protection. Secondly, ear protection. Thirdly, suitable clothing. Four, different type of eye protection. Five, safety boots. And six, safety gloves. Employees' duties under legislation. Use the equipment correctly and in accordance with any training provided. Take care of the equipment and report any defects. Disciplinary action can be taken if employees are unreasonably negligent or reckless with their PPE. Employers' main requirements under PPE regulations. Regulation 4 says the employer must provide suitable PPE if necessary. Regulation 5, all PPE must be compatible if a number of items are worn at the same time. Regulation 6, an assessment of the suitability of all PPE. Regulation 7, the maintenance and replacement of PPE. Regulation 8, the accommodation where it's stored. And Regulation 9, information, instruction and training. Employees' duties under the regulations. Employees must, under Regulation 10, use all PPE in accordance with instructions and training given. Regulation 11, report loss or defects. 
and Regulation 12 make full and proper use of the PPE. We should always make sure that we return it to its store after use. So we've already mentioned last resort. Last resort means the use of PPE signals that the hazard still exists in the workplace. Unprotected individuals or failure of PPE means that the worker or workers will be exposed. So PPE should only be combined with other controls. So how do we assess suitability of PPE? The information required, the type of hazard, concentration levels, manufacturer's performance levels of PPE, the fit and comfort for the individual worker, compatibility with any other PPE worn, an assessment of suitability which must be recorded. Storage of a user's PPE. It must be a suitable area. It may be as simple as a nail to hang a coat or hat. It must protect from contamination. It must be protected from loss or damage and separate accommodation if required. We just mentioned maintained in good condition. This includes making sure it's cleaned regularly, inspected by the user at regular intervals, repaired when required, replaced if needed, and records should be kept for all of the above. Information and training. Employees should be trained on the risk that the PPE is designed to control, trained on the use of the PPE, told of his or her employee duties with regards to the carrying and storing of PPE, and told what to do if lost, stolen, or damaged. Factors affecting use. Failure to wear PPE when required raises issues of management commitment to the overall health and safety and values. Remember, all PPE must be compatible. So for example, eye protection may interfere with peripheral vision and hearing protection may block out wanted noise. Some examples of different types of PPE. This slide shows typical PPE used in the construction industry. Hearing protection, two main types. Type one, objects are placed in the ear to impede passage of sound. And type two, objects placed around the outer ear, which restricts access to the outer ear, as well as to the eardrum and inner ear. Some typical types of hearing protection. Here we have examples of different types. Number one, disposable earplugs. Number two, the more comfortable custom fit earplugs. Number three, earmuffs. And number four, Hox noise breaker ear protection. Respiratory protective equipment. Work activities may result in harmful substances contaminating the air in the form of dust, mist, gas or fumes. For example, cutting a material such as stone, concrete or wood, using a liquid containing volatile solvents or handling a dusty powder. Workers may also need to work in areas where oxygen levels are low, for example, confined spaces such as a chamber or tank. RPE is designed to protect the wear from these hazards. You require RPE that is adequate and suitable to ensure the wear is protected. This means adequate, it is right for the hazard and reduces exposure to the level required to protect the wearer's health. Suitable, it is right for the wearer, task and environment, such that the wearer can work freely and without additional risks due to the RPE. To select RPE that will protect the wear, you will need a basic understanding of the hazardous substance and the amount in the air, which is the exposure, the form of the substance in the air, for example, 
Is it a gas, particle or vapour? The type of work being carried out. Any specific wear requirements such as other PPE or a need for spectacles should be considered. RPE is divided into two main types. We have a respirator, which is a filtering device, uses filters to remove contaminants in the workplace air. There are two main types. Non-powered respirators rely on the wearer's breathing to draw air through the filter, and powered respirators which use a motor to pass air through the filter to give a supply of clean air to the wearer. Or breathing apparatus, which needs a supply of breathing quality air from an independent source, for example, an air cylinder or air compressor. Both respirators and breathing apparatus are available in a range of different styles, which can be put into two main groups. Tight fitting face pieces, often referred to as masks, these rely on having a good seal with the wearer's face. These are available as both non powered and powered respirators and BA. Examples are filtering face pieces half and full face masks. Loose fitting face pieces. These rely on enough clean air being provided to the wearer to prevent contaminant leaking in. Only available as powered respirators or breathing apparatus. Some examples are hoods, helmets, visors, blouses and suits. Warning. Only breathing apparatus is suitable for use in oxygen deficient atmospheres. There are approximately 1,000 eye injuries recorded every day in the UK. So it is important that whatever type of eye protection we wear, we wear it correctly and when required. This section deals with dusk masks and the different levels required. So as you can see here, we have an FFP1 dusk mask. Protects against low levels of dust only. Protects against solid and liquid aerosols, can be used for hand sanding, drilling and cutting. And as we can see, OEL occupational exposure limit protects against materials and concentrations four times the limit. Under a sign protection factor, protects against materials and concentrations four times the limit. The next level in dust masks is FFP2. This protects against moderate levels of dust, protects against solid and liquid aerosols, is a higher protection than FFP1, can be used for plastering and sanding. Our occupational exposure limit protects against materials and concentrations 12 times the limit. Our assigned protection factor protects against materials and concentrations of 10 times the limit. FFP3 dust masks protects against higher levels of dust, also protects against solid and liquid aerosols, higher protection than one and two, can be used for handling hazardous powders such as those in the pharmaceutical industry, recommended when in doubt of protection needed. Occupational exposure limit protects against materials and concentrations of 50 times the limit, and our assigned protection factor protects against materials and concentrations of 20 times the limit. So how do we choose between mask ratings? We must identify the type and level of contaminant exposure, evaluate any airborne hazards in the workplace or workshop, choose our mask based on FFP rating, choose a comfortable and convenient mask. The occupational exposure limit is the upper limit on acceptable concentration and is set by national authorities. When in doubt, always go with the higher level of protection. Safety harnesses are worn for the protection of people who work at height. They are last in the hierarchy of control. Training is required for use and we must ensure that the point of connection is adequate. This slide shows safety harness attachment points. Top row correct, the bottom row incorrect. It is important that before harnesses are worn, 
a complete inspection of the harness is carried out and a written record kept. This section covers the suitability of gloves. Work gloves are worn to cover and protect hands and wrists from potential hazards in domestic, work site and commercial environments. Constructed from various materials and embedded with protective qualities, safety gloves are designed to prevent serious injuries such as cuts, splinters and burns. Selecting the right glove for a product can be challenging because a glove designed for one chemical or function may not be effective for another. Employers should begin by conducting a hazard assessment and consider what chemicals are in the product. So check the label and the safety data sheet to learn more. How the worker will come into contact with the chemical, splash or immersion and for how long, how much of the worker's skin will be exposed, how much dexterity will the worker need, will thermal protection be needed, and will the work involve abrasive materials and will the gloves need to be puncture or cut resistant. Here we have some examples of gloves for different jobs. On the top we have welder's gloves, in the middle we have mechanics or construction gloves, and the bottom picture shows baker's mitts. High visibility clothing. The darker the conditions, the greater the amount of high vids will be required to ensure visibility. For example, full body high visibility rather than a waistcoat only. To be effective, the colour of high visibility workwear needs to allow the wearer to stand out against an ambient background. High visibility clothing comes in three classes. Class 1, which is the least conspicuous, consists of a waistcoat and most trousers. Class 2, more conspicuous than Class 1, waistcoat, jacket and some trousers. And Class 3 is the most conspicuous and is jackets and overalls. Safety footwear. It is a requirement on construction sites to wear safety footwear that is CE certified. This means the item complies with the PPE regulation for site safety boots. But it is important to wear the correct safety boot depending on the job and the work you do. In the area of personal protective equipment, there must be no subject as contentious as safety footwear. Employees in the main hate wearing it and employers approach the issue with some trepidation and uncertainty. An employer's general duty to safeguard employees at work was further expanded in the personal protective equipment at work regulations and guidance on the regulations L25. It may be useful at this point to highlight some of the main requirements. You should provide safety footwear like any other PP only as a last resort. After a risk assessment has been carried out and you've tried to eliminate or reduce the hazard at source then brought in all other reasonable controls. So to summarize, PPE is all equipment which protects a person against one or more risks. It is the last resort in controlling risk. Blue signs are mandatory, so PPE must be worn. PPE should be fit for purpose, checked before use, kept in good condition, cleaned and maintained, worn correctly, and any defects reported. Learners should now have a basic awareness of the main requirements of the PPE regulations and identify types of PPE used most often in the construction industry. Thank you for your time and attention from the team at the CITB. A more comprehensive course on personal protective equipment is available either for booking on site or with the mobile training unit. Please contact the CITBNA office for any further information.